Beautiful day this morning, just enjoying the coolness of it. You know, you'll probably find in your life, if you haven't already, <laughs> and I'm sure you have, that there's going to be people that disagree with you. That there's going to be people that don't see it your way. That there are people that think they're right. The people that you may think you're right. That you may think I'm right. <laughs> but in all of these things, I pray that you hear no evil, see no evil, and speak no evil. Because you see, there is the capability, and this is where people get and don't understand the reality of God personally, is that a person may not have or have learned what you have learned to this day. They may be perfectly designed today for where they're at with what they're doing, so they may never or they may understand what they know to understand for what they're doing in the body of Christ as God has chosen to make them, oh, I don't know, a coffee cup, you know, or a water cup. So, to be honest, if I was a coffee cup, I would want coffee in it. If I was a water cup, I'd want water cup in it. So, you don't want to worry sometimes about how someone may not completely agree with you on everything there is in Scripture, because there's a lot in Scripture. Or that someone comes to the same conclusion you do, because they probably won't. But God can't have both perspectives accurate, even though the two people may be looking at the Scriptures the same way, and still come up with completely opposite directions or even instructions for themselves as God is choosing to use it in a way that fits for them that day. Now it isn't to say that the major some doctrine or something that completely conflicts with scripture is true because no it's not. You know, God doesn't literally come right out and say, hey you know what, junk what Jesus said, just go with what Moses said. <laughs> Jesus gave Moses a lot. So, Let's be real. <laughs> I'd go with the one that, you know, is in greater effect and causes the results that would be accomplishing the purpose that God designed, which would be Jesus. So, there is a certain amount of truth to the idea that God doesn't conflict with the Scripture, but there's also a truth to God makes the Scripture fit where you're at as you're examining it and how it fits for you today as you are being directed by Him. Now, we don't make the scripture the authority and we don't make God the authority solely or alone because you want to kind of like, if you don't really know God's voice, then you want to be careful, but at the same time you don't want to make the word God's voice because you want to be careful because, no offense, it's easy to deceive yourself. And quite frankly, often people do. But if you have the love of God in you and God is leading you, then go with what God is telling you. Let Him be your guide and don't worry what other people may do or say or think. And if they don't agree with you, let them go their way. You know, God bless you. You know, you, you you think this is true, then go do it and praise the Lord. You know, enjoy it. But that's not what God's telling me. So I think I'll stick with what I know. And what I don't know, I'm not worried about. <laughs> How about you? So today, let's figure out what God is speaking to us in a simple way. Because it may not be the same conclusion you come up with me. Or I may not come up with you. But for me, I can come up with the conclusion that God shows me, and for you, God can come up with, you can come up with the conclusion that God shows you. The true Christian, <laughs> from Dozer, the true Christian is a saint in embryo. The appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, 2 Timothy 1.10. Christianity, being in full accord with all the facts of existence, takes into the account the acknowledged moral imbalance in human life. And the remedy it offers is not a new philosophy, but a new life. The ideal to which the Christian aspires is not to walk in the perfect way, but to be transformed by the renewing of his mind and conformed into the likeness of Jesus. Think about that. It's not to walk perfectly. <laughs> the true Christian is a saint in embryo. It is a baby in process. The heavenly genes are in him, 
and the Holy Spirit is working to bring him on into a spiritual development that accords with the nature of the Heavenly Father from which he received the deposit of divine life. In other words, God began in you and impregnated you with his Holy Spirit that in you there is a baby spirit growing and after full gestation begins to become a process of living in you as you become that embryonic life that has become from gestation into birth, into a baby spirit, into a growing child of God, into a mature man of God, into a mature man and woman of God by process. It doesn't happen overnight. You don't wake up one day and say, hey, I'm mature. <laughs> the work of the Holy Spirit in the human heart is not an unconscious or automatic thing. Oh, Yet he is in here, in this mortal body, subject to weakness and temptation, and his warfare with the flesh sometimes leads him to do, to do extreme things to you, that he may accomplish through you the purposes he designs for you, that in your flesh it may cause frustration and consternation, but in your spirit it is that which wars against the nature of your body to be not wanting to yield to the things that you know that God's spirit is telling you and teaching you and instructing you to do. The work of the Holy Spirit in the human heart is not an unconscious or automatic thing. Human will and intelligence must yield to and cooperate with the benign intentions of God. I think it is here that we go astray. In other words, as you cooperate with God and work with Him as He shows you and reveals to you His will as He is working in you, then it will conf confirm from the outside in reading His Word and applying his scriptures to your life as well as from the inside out as his Holy Spirit works in you to conform his image in you from what God has begun and will complete unto the day of salvation as the author and finisher of your faith then in both things there is participation in between of you working from the outside in and him working from the inside out to work out your salvation with fear and trembling that you might become complete in the participation with God in the process of salvation that is accomplished for you in the redemption of the Son that is that he has completed on the cross as he has worked out his sanctification through you unto the day that he presents you faultless before the Father with exceeding joy that you are perfect and faultless in that day got it? <laughs> I didn't think so either way we try to make ourselves holy and fail miserably, as we certainly must. Or we seek to achieve a state of spiritual passivity and wait for God to perfect our natures and holiness as one might wait for a robin egg or a hatch or a roots or a rose to burst into bloom. The New Testament knows nothing of the working of the Spirit in us apart from our own moral responses. Watchfulness, prayer, self-discipline, and acquiescence in the purposes of God are indispensable to any real progress in holiness. In other words, just do what he tells you to do, and as you do, he will do it. <laughs> In you. On you. Through you. With you. To others. By others. And he'll make it all work together for good. Praise the Lord. Wasn't that simple? <laughs> I would say, the simplicity is just do it. Today, find out what he would have you to do, and then just do as he tells you to do.